Hi there everyone, thank you for joining us today for our daily Bible study. We are using the Moravian text. We're in Acts 25 verse 16 through to Acts 26 verse 1. And we've been reading the unfolding story of the life of the Apostle Paul. Um, as you know, Paul started his life called Saul, a Pharisee, a zealot, um, um, a persecutor of Christians. He encountered Jesus on that Damascus road. And then he spent something like 13 years in Damascus, in obscurity, uh, being discipled, learning about Jesus. And then we've been reading about all his incredible missionary journey, um, traveling as far as Macedonia in Europe, between, um, I suppose, Greece and Bulgaria, traveling through uh, what's called Asia, which is uh, Turkey, uh, Ephesus, all those places. Uh, about 14 years traveling as a missionary, doing incredible things. And then here Paul is two years in prison in Caesarea, north of Jerusalem. He will end up spending seven more years approximately in prison in Rome. So 13 years in obscurity in Damascus, 14 years doing incredible things, planting churches, performing miracles. And then something like nine years, the end of Paul's life is spent in prison. I just think it's a really interesting um, uh, reflection on how we create these success narratives for our lives. Yesterday, a key verse in the whole life of Paul and the story of Acts is Paul says, I appeal to Caesar. He has this right as a, a Roman citizen, born a Roman citizen, to be tried before Caesar. And um, Festus, who's the, the Roman governor of the region, he wants to make sure that if he's going to take Paul to uh, see the highest authority in the known world, Caesar, that he's got a good case, a compelling case. He doesn't want to bother Caesar or trouble Caesar for no reason at all. Uh, and so there's this big gathering today. There's all these um, leading figures, it's pomp ceremony, all these high ranking officials, all these leading people of the, the city uh, come to hear Paul speak. Uh, and among them is the Jewish king, King Agrippa. And King Agrippa has come up to Caesarea to pay tribute to Festus, who's um, newly in position of power. And so what Festus does is he, he decides to um, quiz Agrippa about Paul and about what's going on. He, he wants to seek the opinion of a, of a Jewish person uh, around what all the dispute is about. It seems to Festus that it comes down to this. It's about a dead man, Jesus who Paul claims is alive, verse 19. That is the nub of the matter. Uh, Festus is exactly right. That is the heart of the matter. The heart of the Christian faith hinges on that. There is no other miracle greater than the resurrection, that not only did Jesus die for our sins, but he was raised to new life, defeating sin and death forever. That's unbelievable. And to believe that, we need the gift of grace and the power of the Spirit, the revelation of the Spirit, to enable us to believe what is unbelievable. And um, so no wonder Festus rejects it, as does Agrippa, as does the um, Jewish leaders and authorities that are listening to Paul. So anyway, verse 23, there's this grand ceremony, um, all these high-ranking officials, and they've come to hear Paul. Now tomorrow, in tomorrow's reading, we will read the words of Paul, how Paul addresses this crowd. But you don't need to know much about scripture or the life of Paul to know what Paul is going to say. He's going to proclaim Jesus. He's going to proclaim the gospel. He's going to invite people to repent of their sins and into relationship with Jesus. And it seems to me that not only did God orchestrate this gathering, this audience, but God orchestrates our lives the same. The family that we are in, he has placed us in that family to be good news, to reveal Jesus. The communities that we live in, he has placed us in those communities to make Jesus known. The workplace that you are in, you are there in God's great plan to share Jesus with those who will listen. And this is the whole point of Acts, isn't it? that as the disciples, as the followers of Jesus went into different places, they made Jesus known and the gospel spread. 
And so Acts will eventually finish with Paul in Rome at that highest place an audience we've seized. We don't know whether we've got that audience or not, but what we do know is this, that Paul led those around him, even through that prison place, to Jesus. And those people led others to Jesus, and those people led others to Jesus. Disciples who made disciples who made disciples, and the whole world was turned upside down. So let's play our part in that, wherever God has placed us this day.